Welcome to the last episode of Fleet Racing Tour for 2013, the premium Olympic series that brings you the major international sailing events for Olympic classes. Last month we caught the action from the aspirant Olympic event sport of kite racing at the Kite Course Racing Europeans in the beautiful Gisaria, Italy and witnessed the unique achievements of a mother and son claiming top places on the podium. Steph and Oliver Bridge dominated in the women's and men's events respectively to be crowned 2013 European champions. Five great days racing with consistent conditions and sunny weather was more than any of the riders could ask for. Since then, there was intense preparations and training for the riders ahead of the most important championship of the year in China. The 2013 Kite Course Racing Worlds took place in King Bay on the island of Hainan. This tropical island hosted 120 riders who came to participate and deliver their best in the hope of claiming a place on the podium. A world title is the ultimate award and what they are prepared for throughout the year. Although China is renowned for light wind conditions, it was quite the opposite over the five racing days. Great conditions of 12 to 18 knots offered ideal racing, and although the wind was absent on the last day, it did not affect the chances of riders too dramatically, as form had already been clearly established over the 16 races already contested. In the end, it was the German Florian Gruber who, at just 19 years of age, showed invincible form and outpaced all others to win the 2013 World Championship title. The reigning world champion, Johnny Heineken, had to accept second place, with France's Maxime Notcher securing third. In the women, Johnny's sister Erica successfully defended her title, easily eliminating her rivals by counting a scoreline of race wins, leaving European champion Steph Bridge in second and the young Russian rider Elena Kalinina in third. But the year still had plenty of racing on offer for most of these athletes, and what better way to finish than hot-footing it to the Southern Hemisphere and the warm, sunny Western Australia. Host venue Leighton Beach is a short drive from Perth, itself a renowned sailing destination. Perth has hosted numerous international sailing events such as the America's Cup and the ISAF Worlds, which were attracted by the stunning sailing conditions, with virtually guaranteed wind and good weather. It is also firmly on the map as a vibrant kite surfing magnet. Located on the Swan River, Perth was once a small isolated city, but after the mining boom became Australia's fastest growing city and still is today, and is a vibrant and charming destination. Surrounded by the Indian Ocean, Perth boasts some of Australia's best beaches and alongside the relaxed beach life, the region hosts a diverse range of wildlife and vegetation, whether you choose to head inland to the bush or out to some of the spectacular islands off the coast. 2013 marked the first ever holding of the Kite Oceanic Championships, hosted off the iconic Leighton Beach, a mecca for kite boarding. Dubbed as a competition which would pitch Oceana's fastest riders against the rest of the world and time to coincide with the lighthouse to Leighton race, the stage was set for one massive competition. The lineup of riders included world and European champions, with riders from ten nations and three continents. Racing was held off Leighton Beach, a renowned destination of white soft sand and perfect launching and racing conditions for kiting. The opening ceremony took place at the Championship Hotel the afternoon before the races started, where the international and Australian contingent of riders enjoyed a warm welcome from the local organisers and authorities. The first day of racing of the qualifying series and equipment preparation is key as racers waited for the local sea breeze to fill in around midday. Expectations for um, 
WA, it's just, you know, learn about more of myself. It's sunny, it's gonna be windy, the forecast looks great, everybody's getting ready. And, you know, uh, this is the last, you know, event of the year. WA, it's been awesome, the organization is like, wonderful and uh, we got picked up from the airport and that's really hard to get and uh, people is really friendly the 41 men's entries were divided in two fleets with the women racing in one 48 riders were competing representing 10 nations and three continents in the mix were world and european champions competing including the top three ranked men course racers Many of the top 10 women's racers were also there, including the highest ranked racer at number 4, Goma, from Spain. In a steady breeze of around 14 knots, four back-to-back -back races were completed in the men's fleet, with just seven points separating the top six after some extremely close racing on this first day of qualifiers. The young Oliver Bridge, who was only 15 when he won this year's European Championships, raced in the Green Fleet and rode four strong races, securing a performance of all top three finishes. Not a bad start for this young kiter, who continues to show his ability in every event. In the women's division, France's Ariane Imbert topped the leaderboard and on equal points in second place was Poland's Arga Grimska. Spain's Nuria Goma was following in third place. Under clear blue skies, near-perfect breeze conditions and flat water on day one of racing, Germany's Florian Gruber leads the men on four points, Poland's Max Sikowski is in second on eight points and Great Britain's Oliver Bridge is in third on nine points. In the women's division, France's Ariane Imbert tops the leaderboard on six points and on equal points in second place is Poland's Arga Grimska. I'm Manny Bishop, so I've been kiting for two years now and I'm 13. This is my home area, I live in Perth, Western Australia. Today is probably 16 knots, it's pretty consistent and not too much chop, so it's good day kiting with everyone. The next two days served up lighter wind conditions. Crucial conditions for the men as the second day of racing was the last of qualification for the Gold Fleet, which would see just the top 21 riders make the cut. Competitors arrived early down on the beach to make early preparations and kite selection ahead of racing. An anticipated building breeze encouraged a few racers to opt for a smaller kite in later races, but conditions averaged around 12 knots, so an unfortunate choice for some. Another four races on crystal clear waters for the men and women fleets. The usual riders were again at the front with another exceptional day for 2013 world champion Gruber, who claimed four race wins, one of which he subsequently took a penalty for after jumping the start in race six. Gruber has shown his form from early on in 2013 and gradually improved from event to event, showing exceptional improvement. With a sport as physically demanding as kiting, your physical training and preparation is important. This is where youth gives an advantage to athletes like Gruber and Bridge, who are able to peak for longer and push their bodies harder. The riders' heart rates get really high, which is why races never last more than 30 minutes. Kiting is a very demanding sport, which in addition to exceptional physical condition, calls for a great mind and mental approach to the sport. Riders need to choose the right side of the track and respond to attack from other riders. They need to read the wind and waves and every nuisance of a change in conditions as they push themselves and equipment to achieve optimum speed. 
even if you have all these individual ingredients to success, putting them all together at the right time is a challenge. Not everyone can do it. Endurance is certainly key. The end of the second day found the top men's riders advancing to the gold group and a shot at the championship title. Two more days of final races ahead of the medal race stage would pitch the riders in a battle to make the top 10 medal race cut. The seven riders in the women's fleet raced an open series through to the medal races. The small but highly competitive women's fleet included four of the top 10 kiters in the world. Top ranked was Nuria Goma from Spain at number four, with the Polish rider Arga Grimska the world number five and bronze medalist at the kite racing Europeans. So past form indicated they would have the closest tussle. Four more races on day two and it was Grimska who took over the lead from France's Imbert after winning three of the four races. Imbert was chasing hard and managed to claim a win in the penultimate race of the day. With the bullets wrapped up by these two, there was no chance for the other riders to get a look in, and the points margin between Grimska and Imbert and the rest of the riders started to stack up. Even after two days of racing, it looked as though the biggest battle would be for third place and the bronze medal. Even the best make mistakes, but being able to race with a clear mind and without worry of making a mistake is key. This approach enables the riders to push themselves harder and ultimately secure an advantage. Consistent racing and solid results deliver success, which was massively in evidence here on Leighton Beach. I fight a lot with Aga. Uh, yesterday she won two races and I won two races yesterday, so we was uh, to equality. And today I win only one race, so she takes the first place. With eight races now completed, the men's fleet is led by Germany's Florian Gruber on a perfect seven points, with the young Oliver Bridge from Great Britain moving up to second overall on tiebreak over Poland's Max Zakowski, who drops to third. Arga Grimska holds the lead in the women with a two-point advantage over Ariane Imbert, and then a significant 13 points behind is Nuria Goma of Spain. The consistent performances from the top riders continued on day three, the first day of the men's finals. Gruber was on a bullet spree with only Bridge managing to steal a bullet from him in race 10 when Gruber hit some seaweed and was forced to tack early. The 2013 world champion was performing at the top of his game and for sure his world title secure just a few weeks beforehand was a major psychological boost here. Gruber's races were clean and simple and without any mistakes. He always managed to round the top mark in first place and then hold on to his lead. After a bad opening series of races during qualifications, it was time for the veteran Italian rider Riccardo Le Cesare to come up front again and after knocking some solid race finishes in the top three, was back in contention for a medal. Le Cesare was probably the most experienced kiter among the fleet and having to face four riders under 21 years of age in the top five spots was both an advantage and disadvantage for him. Along with Gruber and Bridge were Poland, Zakowski and Ozog. Although Le Cesar carried far more experience as he had competed at numerous more events, he had the challenge of the energy-driven youth who were relentless in their push to be in front at the finish line. It was a rare sight to see four such young riders at the top of the gold fleet. After these four, the next under-21 athlete was racing in the silver fleet. In the women's fleet, there was no rider competing in the under-21 category, but that was just coincidence here. There are numerous under-21 riders competing in the women's events and making an assault on the top of the leaderboard at major kiting world championships, but just not here at this year's Oceanics. At the 2013 Kite Racing World Championships, two riders aged under-21 finished in the overall top 10. Impressively, not only were they under 21 years old, but both under the age of 15. They were not able to compete in Perth as their education obligations understandably do not allow them to travel as much as many of the other athletes competing here. 
it is a tough choice, but something many young athletes across many other sports have to understand and manage. By the end of day four and ahead of the medal races, Gruber still dominated in the men, with Grimska holding firm in the women. I have a good run now. Uh, I'm super happy to be world champion. Uh, it's, it was a dream to be world champion and now it's true. And yeah, I'm still young, 19 years old, so I have a few more years uh, in kitesurfing. And now everyone wants to beat me. Uh, in Melbourne, I managed it to get first as well. So here I try the same and can hold it in a few more events. I will be super happy, but no one is sleeping. Everyone wants to push. And so if I'm second or third in one of the next events, that's life. And yeah, but I train hard and will do my best. With three days of racing wrapped up, Germany's Florian Gruber continues to dominate the men's fleet and incredibly has won 11 of the 13 races so far. In the women, Poland's Arga Grimska leads with a three-point advantage over France's Ariane Imbert, with Spain's Nuria Goma another 13 points behind in third. Tomorrow is the long-distance race, a fast-paced 19-kilometer dash out to Leighton Lighthouse and back to the beach. A bit out of the ordinary for kiting, but sure to be a real spectacle. The penultimate day of racing at the Kite Oceanic Championships was special as riders had the unique opportunity to compete the long distance race from Rottnest Island to Leighton Beach. The 88 riders were transferred to the island for the 19 km drag race where the atmosphere was highly charged. Rottnest Island is legendary in these parts and with 20 pristine bays and 63 stunning beaches is a favourite holiday destination. The island is steeped in history and cultural tours bring Rottnest's colourful maritime, convict, colonial and World War II heritage to life. The island was given the name Rote Nest, meaning rat nest by Dutch explorers who mistook the now world famous Quokus for giant rats. It's a race, about a 19 kilometre race from Rottnest Island, which is uh, just off the coast. And uh, we race to Leighton Beach, which is this beautiful, pristine uh, beach we're at right now. Uh, you know, I first did the event in 2010. Um, prior to that, uh, we tried to run a lighthouse to Leighton, but it was in reverse. So we started here and we tried to go to Rottnest. The race got underway from Rodnest Island at 14.30 hours, with ideal sea breeze conditions of 15 knots gusting up to 20. The rules were simple, the fastest rider to reach Leighton Beach would win. With no limitations on equipment, it was no holds barred. Anything and everything was allowed, course racing, slalom and hydrofoil boards are just some of the equipment used by the riders in search of optimum speed. After some fierce battles and close racing, it was Germany's Marvin Baumeister who crossed the line first, breaking the record by just 40 seconds in a time of 23 minutes and 50 seconds. Coming in 500 metres behind in second place was teammate and reigning kite course racing world champion Florian Gruber. Marie Navarre from France was the first woman to finish. A swift prize giving on the beach and it was then time to dig deep and find every ounce of inner and physical strength as riders swapped back to their kite race boards for two course races each. In the men, Italian Riccardo Lezzesa took his first win of the series to push him up to third overall, but reasserting his dominance to win the next race was Florian Gruber, who still heads up the leaderboard with an eight-point margin over Oliver Bridge of Great Britain in second. The two leading women, Poland's Arga Grimska and France's Ariane Imbert, continue to slog it out for top position, taking a win apiece today. With the final series finished for men and women, it was all down to the final day of the Oceanic Championships, where the medal races would determine which riders would take the three podium spots. Stay with us after the break to find out.
the ultimate day of racing at the Kite Oceanic Championship off Leighton Beach, Western Australia was a crucial one. With points close, the four short medal races would put intense pressure on riders and allow no room for the slightest mistake from those with podium ambitions. A 40 degree heat and light winds of between 6 and 8 knots created tough race conditions. It's last day, Platinum Fleet. Uh, we're going to have short course on wearing short pants for today. Kiting is a very physically demanding sport, requiring both strength and technique. Gruber and Bridge have both shown great maturity this year, with Bridge winning the Europeans when he was only 15 years of age, and Gruber winning the world at age 19. This pair are already stars of the sport, and also the future of the sport, with many years of success and championship titles ahead. Today was no exception, and it was a relatively easy task for each of them to hold on to their positions on the leaderboard. Gruber has raced a flawless performance all week, and the four medal races were no exception for him. Bridge did what was needed to hold on to his second place overall, and finished with an 18-point margin over the third place Let Cesar. For Let Cesar, a podium finish was going to be tough, but he delivered the consistency needed to come through and claim third on the podium. Since the start of the competition, there has been fierce competition between Poland's Arga Grimska and France's Ariane Ember, with none of the other riders even close to challenging the superiority of these two on the leaderboard. The championship has been a battle between them, as they shared the bullets, but Grimska was more consistent and established a better performance around the track to secure a valuable points advantage over Ember. And yet again on the last day, Grimska proved too strong in the women's fleet, winning every race to take the Oceanic Championship title. Imbert safely secured second place and the Spanish Goma completed the podium in third. It was a great week of racing at the inaugural Kite Racing Oceanic Championships, which marked the last major course racing event of 2013 and showed off some awe-inspiring racing. Florian Gruber convincingly won the men's event, taking out all but one of the three races for a flawless performance. In the girls' fleet, a bit of an upset perhaps, as the highest-ranked rider, Nuria Goma from Spain, could not muscle in on Grimska and Imbert's domination of the leaderboard. 2013, I had a great year. Uh, I won the Worlds. And yeah, that's an awesome feeling. And now I won here the Oceanics. Perfect end of the season. Uh, now I can uh, relax a bit, and yeah, it was a great event. Uh, nice people, uh, good organization, and perfect weather. So yeah, so I want to end. Uh, this is the end of the season, and now we go for 2014. The final celebration was the closing and award ceremony that officially ended the event. A wonderful party on Leighton Beach for all competitors, with the newly crowned Kite Racing Oceanic Champions receiving their awards. For sure, they will be back next year. The Fleet Racing Tour has enjoyed a great racing year, opening this year's series at the major Olympic Sailing World Cup event in Palma de Mallorca, the Trofeo Princesa Sofia. We then moved to the renowned Olympic Race Weeks, Delta Lloyd Regatta in Holland and Kielowoha in Germany, which are both part of the EuroSAF Champions Sailing Cup Tour. We tracked the future stars of the sport at the ISAF Youth Sailing World Championships in Cyprus and the World of Skiff Sailing at the 49er and 49er FX Worlds and Europeans, where speed counts for everything. We were there when Olympic champion Matt Belcher won his fourth consecutive 470 World Championship and Olympic champions Joe Allaire and Polly Powery won their first 470 Women's Worlds. Fleet Racing Tour follows the journey of the world's best sailors and defining moments in their careers as they dream to make history. There will be even more action and drama in 2014 as the Olympic Games closes in. Thank you for being with us in 2013.